Hey, Natural Born Sisters. Welcome to another episode of Kinky in the Kitchen, where every swirl, curl, coil, and wave is celebrated. You'll hear inspiring stories from women who have left straight hair, wigs, and weaves behind, despite the discrimination and bias, to reclaim their power by rocking their natural hair. Be it spiraled, kinky, defined, or straight. Whether you're already a natural sister or still finding the courage to unleash your beautiful coils, you're not alone, and you're in the right place. Let's get to know your host. She's passionate passionate about inspiring black women to rock their natural hair with confidence, teaching our black natural hair wearing women how to show up despite hair discrimination and biases. She's natural like you and rocks her kinks in the kitchen loud and proud. She's Lisa E, aka Natural Born Sister. What's up, Natural Born Sisters? It's your girl, Lisa E, aka Natural Born Sister, aka Living My Best Life. Welcome to the Kinky in the Kitchen podcast, the show that highlights black women who are rocking their natural hair with confidence, despite discrimination and bias. So we're keeping the pace for the professionals edition of the Kinky in the Kitchen podcast. Last week, we talked to Angie Boyd, a military kid out of Hawaii, now residing in Virginia Beach, Virginia. She's a professional hairstylist and has been natural for over 23 years. Now, this is before natural even became a thing because 23 years ago, what we was rocking, perms, I mean, it's like we have come a long way, but she has been there. She's been doing it, right? So she taught me how important it is to be a professional cosmetologist who is straightforward and accommodating to customers who trust them with their crowns. And she has the ability to explain both sides of the fence of customer and hairstylist when it comes to working with professional stylists. And I'm telling you, I learned so much from this sister. She was giving the best of her and I received it all. So now, welcome to episode two of our four-week run. However, this is the strangest event I've had. You know what? I'm going to come off topic a little bit. This is the strangest event I've had ever. Our second guest was to be a different sister, but due to circumstances of legal documents, she backed out at the last minute. Now, I bring this up. Why? Because this is the first time it has ever happened. And I want to announce on here for any woman who's interested to come on the podcast to interview with me. I have nothing to hide. I just do things the legal way because I'm confident in my work. So like I said, there's a first for everything, right? But I'm not bummed about it at all, sis. In fact, I'm pleased to chop it up with my next guest. And guest number two is from my hometown, Brooklyn, BK. And she is an adorable, upstanding woman. Born here in the States, daughter to Haitian parents, mother of two and she's rocking that natural hair with confidence and although timid in her young years she learned how to kick stigmatism out the park and became a leader through her craft by using her own personal experiences with her natural hair and she has helped hundreds of women get through their own natural hair challenges by using a seven-step process combined in a two-hour workshop and it worked well with a diverse circle of women I'm talking black women, white women, Asian women, Australian women, the list goes on. But look, this is this mad fun, yo. She's sweet and she's going to warm you with her story. So without further ado, I give you natural born sister, Gladia Etienne. Hey, Gladia, how are you today? Hi, Lisa. I'm good. I'm good. I'm happy to be here. Good. I'm happy that you're here. Welcome to the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um... I just want to get started and get right into it because that's just how I do it. Um, I'm so interested in hearing your story, you know, your hair journey. I just want to hear how it is from the beginning, in the middle, and then up until now. Maybe you can talk a little about that with us. Yes. Um, So uh, my name is Gladia, but my brand name is known as Gladia's Natural. But that's not how it started. Um, I used to perm my hair. I've been perming my hair since I was seven years old. Wow. And I am now 34. But I stopped perming after about 19 years. Um, it was way into my 20s after I had two children. Okay. Um, that something clicked, you know, like many of us who've been um, perming our hair. I was one of those people like, Anytime I needed a touch up, I was in that salon. You know what I mean? Because I did not like to see my hair um, kinky, 
or even like it would just be hard to maintain. You can tell the textures are completely different from my straight part to the root. I was that kind of person that, I, and I have like really, really thick hair. So using two boxes of perms, um, perm boxes per session, and I had to come like every six weeks. So that is a lot of chemicals being processed in my hair for a very, very long time. And I never saw anything bad about it. I actually thought um, this is how you get good hair. This is what you have to do in order to um, be even considered beautiful. Because prior to that, my mom didn't have, my mom did have my hair natural and I'm the eldest of eight children, really? which means, yeah. And my mother had seven girls and one boy. So um, the first five at that age, she had five kids. By the time I was seven, it was five of us already. And we were all girls. So in the morning time, my mom getting our hair ready, getting our hair, getting us ready for school and doing our hair was like a hassle. Imagine five tender headed girls and she has to do the hair every single morning or something with it before we go. So it was a hassle. But it was not only that. I used to go to school and get teased. Like I literally remember being in elementary and they used to pull my hair. Um, and that was like traumatic for me because I used to come home and tell my mom, I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go. I, you know, and she couldn't understand why I didn't want to go. And I tell her, they're pulling my hair. They're pulling my hair. And I remember when the Just For Me commercial came out, Just mm -hmm. For Me, and yes. I'm sure a lot of people remember that. And I remember seeing it. I'm just like, I want, I want that. I want that. I, I will have beautiful hair like these Black girls. You know, I'll have, girls, I'll have beautiful hair like those girls that I saw in my school that had better hair that wasn't getting teased, that wasn't getting picked on. And I remember specifically asking my mother, can I have that? And like a regular child, they're most likely going to be asking for a toy or a new something that come out. I'm asking for my hair to be pretty, you know, to be straight up. And I think that's when my mom decided to, to take that step and relax our hair. And I tell you, prior to that, they used to not only pull my hair, but call me Haitian booty scratcher. My parents are Haitian. I was born here. They should call me Haitian booty scratcher, you know. Ugly. Wait, how did they know that? Is it your name? They, how did they know you were Well, Haitian? they they knew my, because yeah. my parents used to come to the school. My mom okay. had heavy accent. <laughs> she gotcha. can't deny. And most of the time I had to translate sometimes for my mother because she couldn't even speak the, the language fully at that age. Because I was already seven. My mom, my mom came to America Se about seven years prior so by the time she came to america she had me okay oh so, um so she even when we had to do homework that was a you know a hassle trying to <laughs> explain to my mother what is asking so she could tell me what i should do you know what i mean so that was the process and so they used to call me haitian booty scratcher all my all my sisters um uh, we used to get teased and it was just like tag like I just hated I hated people in school or students in particular and when I got my perm I remember the first day I still remember the clearest day I felt so good like my hair is straight and I'm just like oh I'm gonna look so nice and I you was, were feeling yourself Claudia I was really feeling myself <laughs> I, at that age I could remember how proud I was um and when I went, the same way I was feeling about myself was the same way the reaction was. People were just so much more nicer to me. They weren't calling me Haitian booty scratcher. Now they were like, oh, are you mixed? Are you Dominican? All of a sudden, I'm Dominican, you know? Wow. I was just like going with the flow, going with it. I guess I'm Dominican. I don't know. What, what does that mean? You know, I guess Dominicans have straight hair, but a, a Haitian person has ugly, dirty hair, you know, and it, 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 it just stuck with me that I was just like, all right, now that I have my hair perm, I was accepted. I was now beautiful. And that stayed with me for a very long time. I didn't realize how traumatic it was until I started to have the thoughts 
of going natural or even seeing my hair looking just a little bit kinky under those perms, there was this fear that used to come up in me like, oh no, I don't want that to happen again. I don't want this to be me again. That is not a me. That is bad hair. You know, I need my good hair. And the only way I can have good hair is if I continue to maintain this. So all throughout my years and um, is the, my turning point was until I had my my daughter. And I remember when she was born, I was like, this girl is like, I don't think she belongs to me. Like, how is this even possible? You know, beautiful hair, silky hair. I'm thinking, you know, sometimes kids start out like that, but then their hair texture starts to change the older they get. And her hair texture didn't change. My husband, he's also Haitian, um, but he was born in Haiti, you know, so he's, you know, predominantly black. All his family is black, including I. And it was just like, she's not mixed. Yeah. You know what I mean? Her hair is super curly, super beautiful. And then one of the things that people used to say around me, because again, around my circle, everybody's perming my hair. All my sisters perming my hair. Everybody I know is doing the same thing. Whether they had good hair or not, they're doing that to, to for the status. And so I remember looking at my daughter. I remember they looking at my daughter and they're like, oh, you know, when you, I can't wait for you to perm her hair. You know, it's just going to be pretty or prettier. Oh, okay. You know, and I'm that's another like, stigmatism that we fall short on. It's like, what are you trying to say? That we're not pretty because when we're natural, we have to be chemicalized in order to be pretty. So yeah, I, yeah, I've oh, I love been there. That word, <laughs> chemicalized. Mm-hmm. So apparently, although her hair, is, her hair is beautiful, they were telling me it would be prettier if you were just to perm it because her hair was super curly. And I'm just like, I really don't like what they're asking. I'm like, ain't nobody going to put perm in my daughter's hair. I said, up until she reached an age where she wants to perm her hair, let her decide that when she gets there. I'm not going to be the one that manipulated because I already see, I don't, I didn't even do anything. And her hair is growing. By the time she was three years old, her hair was down her waistline. Wow, Gladia, really? By the time she was three, and I can send you pictures as well, just so you can have reference or whatever of my daughter. But I was just like, you know, I, I wasn't really in, I was just like, maybe I have good hair. And I was like, where should get that hair from? But all of my family, my sisters, my, we all have long hair as well. Especially when it was perm, my hair was always like halfway down my back or whatever. Um, but I just thought it was just because of the perming, you know, I'm taking care of it. The perm is good. The perm is making my hair look good and long and healthy. And so I just remember the time I ended up having my son. <laughs> so now my daughter's three. Um, and then my son is like two. When he was born, he had beautiful hair as well. But over time, he started to lose it, like around like the- Oh, crown. really? Okay. Yeah. He went bald completely. He had that little mohawk in there. And it was just really um, hard. You know, okay. my daughter here was like a, if we're talking about texture right now, um, for those of you who are aware of texture, so it was like a 3C. My daughter is like a 3B, 3C kind of hair. Wow. And yeah. wait, before you continue, what, what are you- what is your texture? Or C. That is a big difference. Or C. Wow. Thick, thick for C. Hers, you could just wet it even right now, just wet it, just super curly. You know what I mean? Right. Um, I don't really have to do much to maintain her hair. So I just, I'm just looking at it like, I don't know. I really don't know this. I don't understand it. Mm -hmm. But I'm willing to, to maintain her hair. And I wasn't really doing much to even maintain it so that it can grow and thrive. But here's the funny part. I had my son and I told you he was losing his hair. As he got older, around two, three years old, the same thing happened. His hair started to grow. And my husband, he had braids at the time. He was like, oh, I want to braid my son's hair. I want you to braid my son's hair as well. I used to braid my husband hair take care of my daughter's hair. And now I have a baby boy. He wants me to braid his hair. So I started to braid his hair. By the time he was three, four years old, his hair was down his waistline. Wow. What is and going was, on? And he has 4C hair. He has the thick, like, coarse hair. Yeah. yeah, coarse. Like you part it, you feel like you're never going to finish braiding his hair. And I'm just like, Wait a minute. <laughs> Is God trying to tell me something? Because I have two children, opposite gender, 
opposite texture, same length. And I was like, all right, I'm still starting to hear people still talking about, oh, I can't wait for you to perm your daughter's hair. Your son never cut his hair, never cut his hair. You know, people are excited about my son. But my daughter, they're like, oh, I can't wait to perm everybody. Just, I'm like, wow. I'm like, I cannot sit here and keep telling my daughter, don't perm if she doesn't have not one example around her to convince her to love herself as she is. Let alone her own mother who's telling her what not to do. Here I am being hypocritical about telling her, don't do this, but here I am doing it. And I made a hard decision. I was like, you know what? I don't like it. (laughs) I don't like it. But for her sake, I'm going to do this for her because I wanted to be a role model for both of them. To know that they're beautiful just as they are, that you didn't have to manipulate it in any kind of way. And I remember making that decision and it was like uh, the hardest, one of the hardest decisions I made because I was just really going back and forth with my thoughts about Mm -hmm. it. Um, I remember just altogether stopping, relaxing my hair. I stopped relaxing my hair. And then I really started to see what was going on, what's happening. The textures was, oh my gosh, like the roots in my hair growing mingle with the relaxed ends of my hair. Okay, I yeah. look like a hot mess, mm-hmm. a hot mess. And I then I tried, oof, and I tried to, I tried to mingle it. I tried to make it work because I'm like, I don't want to cut my hair because mm-hmm. I had this fake with short hair. And I'm like, but at the same time, I'm trying to maintain two different textures that was like complete opposites. And I struggled. My husband, however, he was always the one to tell me, why don't you go natural? And I looked at him like, you're only saying that because you don't understand the process. You want me to do this, but until I really get into it, until you really see what it looked like, then you will understand why I'm not, you know? So I never really took account to what he was saying because I thought he was just kind of naive in (laughs) why I was doing it. And when I just, when I made the decision for myself, when I was like, okay, well, at least he support me. I know I have his hundred percent support if I'd made the decision, but I also wanted to do this something for my daughter. And I was like, you know what? That was just more personal in a way where I'm taking the step. It wasn't like somebody pushing me. It was, I'm pushing myself now. Um, that was, a, that was one of the greatest, um, uh, leap of faith because I felt like I had my husband. Maybe if I didn't have his support, it probably would have been even a little bit harder. Yeah, if absolutely for sure. Um, but having knowing the fact that he always wanted this, I was like, oh, this is this is a no-brainer for him. You like, why don't you just leave your hair out? Why don't you need to do the perm thing? You don't need it. You don't da 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 da. And then he started to actually see what was happening when I wasn't perming my hair no more. Um, and I had the relaxed ends because I'm like, I'm going to just grow it out. I'm watching, trying to watch all the YouTube videos, Natural 85. Um, that was about 10 years ago. Um, that was back in 2011 when I made the decision to go natural. So Natural 85 was already like one year in to her natural hair journey when I started to follow her on YouTube. That's one of the natural hair. I call her the guru of natural hair. What's her name? I'm sorry. I missed that. Um, natural, natural. Her, her real name is Whitney White. I think I've, I think I've seen her work. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she's, she's one of the, um, mothers who kind of started the process. I remember watching her videos. It wasn't much out there and I kept following her video. I'm like, this is, this is what I want. I want my hair like hers, you know? And I used to follow her all the time. And I'm like, you know, just feeling motivated and doing my little thing. I'm like, I do want to grow up, but she did the whole big chop, you know? She chopped it off and it was just like this, this little fro and everything. And she tried to take care of it. Me, I was just like, you know what? I'm just going to let it grow. And when it's long enough, then I'll decide if, I'll, you know, I'll cut it from that point on. At least it will be long enough. That process really opened my eyes to how uneducated I was about my hair. And how discriminating my own people was about my hair. Um, 
I ha- I really had like no support other than my husband or I had my one friend. She was just supporting me, but not necessarily believing why what I'm doing. You know, so oh, that that would never be me kind of conversation. Okay. Um, I was constantly being told, why did you do this to yourself? You used to have beautiful hair. Um, I remember one time my father was like, almost like embarrassingly telling me this. Um, why don't you do your hair like your sister's whenever I went out? And um, I've had comments like, oh, your husband don't have money to take care of your hair. Why does it look like this? Um, I was just constantly crying about it. I hated, I hated the whole thing. I hated it. God. Oh, that's terrible, Gladia. And and before you continue, and I I want you to continue, I just want to ask you about the YouTube thing, because I know for me, I've always had problems with the YouTube watching of tutorials. I felt like, and I didn't notice as I was watching them, but I felt like they didn't apply to me, my hair texture. 4C was not the popular texture when these videos came out. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with my hair? Because it's not coming out the same way as this girl on here. And I would get so frustrated. So that's why I'm I'm bringing it up because I want to know if we were in that same type of space where you were going through the same thing. Okay. Okay. Because I know a lot of girls told me about that too before. First, I thought it was only me. My hair's not coming out like yours. You know, but now we're more educated. We're talking about texture. We're talking about porosity. We're talking about all the things now. And and I'm not saying that those women who did that back then, I don't blame them at all. Those were the original gangsters. They were even the brave ones to even start to do it with limited education. And I give them full credit. It's just that we are all learning. Nobody had the right formula. So I just wanted to make sure if that that was you too um, in that same space. Again, she she didn't have the, the girl I was following. And I was following a couple of others. It wasn't much. Around 2000, it was not many out there doing natural hair. It was her who was actually documenting her journey, like religiously. And okay. every week she would post like a video. Oh, here's just this thing I was just researching and, I, and I'm making this avocado kind of conditioner for her hair and she would put it in and it would make her hair look thing. And I'm like, one day I'm going to do that, you know? So I was just stuck with her, hoping and believing that my hair can do something of a version like hers. But I really didn't feel like I had her texture. I'm like, well, she already, she has already good hair in my head. I was like, you already had good hair. Even though you were perming, you still have good hair. But we had similar features. She she looked like your typical Black girl with long permed hair. Um, I had long permed hair. And I agree 100% with you. I didn't see people more likely bigging up 4C hair. Basically, my hair, if it was in like a Afro or whatever, I didn't see it curly. I've never... I, I already told myself, I don't have curls. I don't have hair like these girls. And we're talking about 4C hair right now. Mm -hmm. I definitely didn't see, because I saw what it looked like when in the roots. It maybe looked a little wavy, but nothing, nothing to, to, for me to be like, Ooh, I'm seeing a little, Oh, okay. There's hope. Maybe I do have really good hair here Mm -hmm. like the girls who are much curlier um I just didn't believe I had that I was like nah my hair definitely not gonna do what hers doing but at least it could come close that's what I was saying in my head at least I could go natural doing some whatever to make it look a little bit more tame than the frizz out big fro curless kind of look you know what I mean frizzy and all that I was just like I just needed to look decent so I could go out you know what I'm saying um so to your answer uh, to your question um no there weren't many people out there that I felt complimented my hair that I was like I'm gonna follow exactly what she's doing because we have the same exact hair nope as a matter of fact I was following natural 85 is how I realized we don't have the same hair because everything I did 
I didn't get the same exact result as she did. Exactly. So I admired her and I followed her. And again, the more women started to join onto the YouTube channel um, and create, you know, show what they're doing with their hair Mm -hmm. and you trying to follow all that, it becomes exhausting. It becomes like, okay, drop this, go do that. Drop that, go do that. You couldn't find something that was just like, okay, if you have this kind of hair, do this. If you have that kind of hair, do that instead. Yeah. But did we know? We didn't really understand. I know I didn't. Hair. Yeah. I just believe that if you were just born blessed with just good hair, the simpler methods that they were showing on the YouTube channels, you would get an amazing, exquisite result. Whereas the rest of us were just in the dumpsters, the not good enough, the not still pretty enough. So I'm still in my mentality where I'm like trying to break off the perm, you know, the cycle of me having to relax my hair. And trust me, I contemplated going back many, many times where I'm like, mm, maybe I should just slap on a relaxer because I have a wedding that I'm going to, or I have this that I'm going to. I don't feel beautiful enough or good enough to even allow my hair to just be on on the out like just let out as is because of the stigmas um that was shunned on me I was just I was just embarrassed for myself and I'm just trying to learn it as I'm undoing it you know what I mean yeah. so that was a ugly ugly process you said so, something very interesting, Claudia. You said <laughs> had to be blessed with that type of hair. Is that something that you still believe as you had to be blessed to have a certain hair type? Oh, okay. Uh, I'm not the same girl that I'm like a whole. Because <laughs> I was the same way. That's why I asked him trying to come here. Story. Oh, yeah. So I was, I was always thinking, oh my, I w- I'm not blessed with that type of hair. So I can't do anything with it. Look at this. I can I can send pictures of how much styles I've done over the years with just my natural hair. I, I, I the last five years I think I've had uh, maybe three four years now. If I'm if if I'm correct with my math, because the pandemic really blinds me with okay. time. <laughs> um, but I stopped doing even crochets and things like that, like really doing my own natural hair with exquisite styles. You know what I mean? I have to um, give you props for that because I'm I'm still in frustration stage. Yeah. <laughs> I really am. <laughs> it's like a whole shit show up here. It's like, okay, what's going to happen next tomorrow? Beautiful. <laughs> Your hair is beautiful like Thank that. You. I've learned how to make quick styles. Like this style was a two-step style. And that's I'm beautiful. Right now. And you think it was nothing fancy, just twist, 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 put it down and then take my hair out. I got to be honest. I thought you went to the hairdresser. I said, damn, she went to the hairdresser for this, for this show. (laughs) That's a real compliment right there. It looks really nice. It does. Simple. Just, I just parted here and then I twist it up and then put my hair down in a ponytail. Literally, that's all I did. No detangling, wow. no nothing. Sprayed it up because I got accustomed to my. I understand my hair. I could wake up looking like a mad woman right now. Give me a few. Give me a few minutes, not even hours. You mm-hmm, know, mm-hmm. I could. I could get a quick style, even if it's you know, uh, very minimal. I can help it make my make it feel a little bit elegant. You know, yes. just a little swoop like. We have that kind of hair. That's the beautiful thing about it. Yes. We have that thickness for me to do a twist like this and it looks this chunky. You know right. what I mean? I have learned to really, really, really love my hair now because now like now everybody want to know what I'm doing. You right. know what I mean? So going back to the time when um, uh, people were talking about me and the people that was just saying those comments about my hair. Um, I remember when my hair started to thrive. So here we are in the middle um, because I was consistent. And the reason why I started to thrive is because I finally decided to big chop. Okay. And I was like, I've tried. I've tried to keep the two textures together. I was doing braids. I was watching a lot of videos of how to do braids. Did my own braids, buy the hair, going into my house because I couldn't afford to really go to the salon. Yeah. You pay an arm and a leg for that. 
Yeah. Um, and I'm just doing it, watching the video and then doing it. And it was not perfect, but it was good enough for me to go out. I'm like, okay, at least I can wear this to a wedding. I don't have to feel insecure, whatever. I was doing a lot of those kind of simple styles um, where I was using braids or anything to cover my actual natural hair because I was not ready um, to just keep facing this, the insults that I was bearing on a day-to-day basis. So eventually um, I was like, let me, um, let me big chop. Oh my gosh. So I'm sorry. When you decided and you, cause this is a big decision, big chop. The BC <laughs> is a big decision. How was you feeling? Like, was it something that you just said, you know what? I'm just going to do it. Or did you keep thinking about it? I kept thinking about it. Cause remember, um, it's growing. And I have the other ends. And I'm just like, everybody, like all the, all the girls that were showing their videos of their big chopping, not, but, but chopping off the relaxed end, yeah, yeah. Then you could see the curls just like snap back. And I'm just like, I think, I think I need to let go of the perm. It really is like, I could see my hair nice and wavy from here, but here is just web, webby, you know, it's stringy. It's, and then I tried to blow dry my hair so it could be the, the, as straight as the other thing. So now I'm trying to damage that part of my hair. And I'm just like, and I'm listening to these girls, don't use high heat, don't use this, don't that, that, that. I'm like, oh my God, I have to cut this because I can't try to, it's either I cut it or I continue to keep it in braids. The braids allowed my hair to continue to grow without me messing with it. So that was my plan. And then when it got, quote unquote, long enough. My hair was just about a few inches long when I was like, I'm ready to cut it. Literally, it was just like that because I seen enough for me to be like, just do it, just do it. You know, you've been going at this long enough. I think it's time for you to just cut it and get rid of that part that's keeping, that's like, like kind of hindering the hair yeah. to do what it needs to do. And there, and and I think I saw a video where it really scared me. There was like, you know, the the part that's dead, it can eat up into the good part of the hair and start to ruin your growth, your new growth. And I was just like, no, I don't want that. Then that's just right. the whole purpose. So I was like, all right, I'm gonna do it. And I went to a Dominican salon, a Dominican salon that I routinely go to. And um, I had, um, what did I do? I asked them to chop off the parts that's relaxed they're dominican i'm sure the language that i'm asking they're not familiar with it they just used to trimming the hair yes you know cutting it even like i'm trying to explain to her i'm like no from right here and cut off the perm the relax the relax ends cut those you know i asked her to cut it and eventually what she ended up doing is cutting my hair even all around. She and you still up. had perm relaxed yes. hair. Okay. And I just looked at her and I'm like, I could not explain any harder how I wanted this to be. I left the salon and I was just like, my hair was now like right here, you know, like this little bob cut or whatever. And it was still straight because she washed my hair. She blow dried it. Then she cut it. And then I was like, all right, you're going to have to do this yourself because they don't know what you're talking about. They don't know what it means to cut perm off. What, what does that mean for, to them? You know what I mean? I said, I watched enough videos that when you wet your hair, you can tell where the perm ends start. Yes. So that's what I did. So I wet my hair and I saw how curly it was and where the curl stops is where I was like, that's where you have to cut. I went, I grabbed my scissors and I told my husband and I was showing him, I was like, she cut it, but she didn't cut it right. Like, he's like, oh, well, you know, I guess you're going to have to do it yourself. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I'm about to do. I'm going to have to do this process myself. I went in the bathroom, grabbed my scissors and I'm looking in the mirror. I wet my hair and I'm like, okay, that looked like, okay, I should cut right here. I cut it. And I promise you, I felt like I cut like maybe here or something. Okay. The hair went all the way like. <laughs> Yeah, the shrink is just real. <laughs> I sat there looking at my hair like, no, that's that's not right. <laughs> Did I cut all my 
hair mm-hmm. off. <laughs> like, what, what did I do? And I cut a big chunk too. So it was mm-hmm. not like I could have like hide it and be like, you know what? Let me not, let me not continue because I screwed up or whatever. No, now that you started, you can't even stop. Like you already, you're too far but, in yeah. to stop. <laughs> and I went to my husband. Tears. I've, I understand why people cry. Tears. Yeah. Like I literally got emotional and I'm looking at him. And I'm like, what did I do? I don't think I, I don't think this was supposed to happen. <laughs> he was looking at me. He was like, whoa, what happened? What? I like, look how much I cut off. And he was like, okay. He doesn't even understand. Okay. He's like, okay, so now what? <laughs> I was like, I have to make it all look the same. <laughs> uh, so it wasn't that the fact that it looked shorter for you, it wasn't looking the same because you know how it is when the stereotypical length is always, in- okay. So it wasn't that for you. Got it. Okay. It wasn't what I imagined. It wasn't like, I don't know what I was, I, I don't know what I wanted, but it wasn't that. It wasn't I that. Was looking at it like you screwed up big time and you cannot go back now. Yeah. You are, you are screwed where either you move forward or you walk around with this one side. <laughs> one <trunk. laughs> out with no one-sided chunk i'm gonna have to do the whole rest of the head and i'm just gonna cover my head up that's that was the that was the next plan so i did i continued cutting and i'm just like and i started getting scissor happy like every little straight part i was like and i saw how the ends would just do this little curl thing okay and i was just like okay starting to love it love it love it love it cutting all over and i tell you the truth i never felt more liberated in my life scared terrified yes but free like now you really can start over and figure out how to do this now this new thing that's growing out your scalp we're gonna go figure it out we're, right. we could do something with this even if you have to put braids on for a very long time we could do something with this we can we can we can work with this so I was really like all right I had I had bought everything, guys. Like they said, I bought everything that came to natural hair. I had perm rods, flexi rods. Anytime I saw something come out, I, I went and bought it. I'm yeah. like, I, I need to have that because it will make my hair look better. Mm-hmm. Because my hair is still not good. Mm-hmm. It's short. It's this and that. But I need to help it be better. You mm-hmm. know, look better and this and that. So my first style, I remember really doing after you know, doing braids and stuff. And I had a little bit of length and I started to see my hair growing. And I was like, all right, now I want to just use actual like perm rods and everything. And I put my perm rods in, did a whole style, took it out, these cute little curls in my head. And I was just like, this is cute. I like it. You know, I'm going to eventually not wear it like this. Um, You know, I wanted it to be a little bit more lengthier. I started to feel myself the way I was feeling myself with my hair was straight. You know, I was like, I could, I could play around with this. And right. over the years, I just been consistent, just doing different styles. I was on YouTube. Like that was like regular TV for me. I was hardly watching regular television. I was just like, the next girl had this new yes. video and I want to watch it. I was saving so many videos. Naturel 85 was doing these, you know, um, uh, avocado mask for her hair and this and that. I will go duplicate that. Go try my own. My hair would be hard, or I would try something else. And I'm like, maybe I should try another conditioner, and then my hair would be a little bit more better. And I couldn't understand why. Right? I just I was just doing the trial and error. I was like, okay, what she recommended did not work for me. Let me find something else that may work for me. All right. So that's how I started to to play around with products in my hair until I fell onto Pantene Provine, the one in the brown bottle yeah. is specifically for natural women. They had it for, and I only started using it because it was specific for natural women with natural hair. And because it was affordable, cause I used to do a lot of couponing. So I was able to get it at a very discounted price nice. at the CVS. So I ended up using that not only on my hair, but all my kids, um, both my children's hair as well. So it saved me tons of money. 
it was uh, economical for me as well. I mean, not just economical, but it was actually helping my hair in, in some context, you know, it wasn't doing what she was telling me, you know, it was a lot better. And I thought I was like, you know, I could work with this. I could work with the shampoo and a conditioner that I could get on a regular basis that is affordable um, and give me some results that I'm actually starting to like. And it was not until one day I remember putting um, some conditioner in my hair and I saw my hair like curly, like wavy. And I'm like, is that me? Mm -hmm. No way. That's not me. No way. No way. I do not have curls. Like I did not. I started to see curls. Then my, and then I was learning about porosity around that time, learning how to seal in the, um, um, the liquid in my hair. I did a porosity test and I figured I was low porosity. I was like, okay, so my hair needs heat, which I did whenever I deep condition, I put some heat so it could get in. And then when I, when I, um, um, when I took it out, sorry, when I took it out, it was, um, I used cold water to seal it and my hair would look super shiny, super beautiful. Wow. And I was like, I think you got it. Wow. And think, when was this moment? How, how, how far back? Um, about like 2013. Okay. Ish. Okay. Um, was when, not even 2013, it's like end of 2012. Okay. I really started to see. Now my hair was growing, starting to grow. It wasn't the same length. Things are starting to change. Not only I'm seeing curls, but it's, it's growing. So for me, I want, I want, I don't mean to cut you again. Oh, okay. <laughs> I want you to explain because a lot of people who are not 4C don't understand 4C sisters because when we go through trying to see, like you said before, you don't really see a curl because the hair is so dense and coarse, you don't see a curl. So of course, when we're doing something to it to, to get a curl there, we're excited about it. So I just want you to just, I just want people to know why your story as a 4C sister is like that that different from others because of our pattern and texture is very different from other sisters that have other types of textures. Absolutely. Absolutely. Our, our curls are a lot more coiled, right? Very so much. A lot more tighter in comparison to maybe a, a, a woman with 3A to 3C hair type. So the lower right. you go in that hair trust, so it starts from 4C, 4B, 4A, and then 3C, 3B, 3A. The C's are usually the thicker of that group, you know, um, a little bit rougher. I would say I used to call my hair like a Brillo pad, like literally. Mine I, is I was a yes. Brillo. Like I was like, if I wash some pots right now, it would be <laughs> right. So because that's my hair, you know what I mean. So I never believed my hair could do anything other than that. Like the best that it could possibly do would be getting it wet enough so that it could be uh, um, flatter. You know what I mean, or more control. That's the word. Um, but I didn't understand about the conditioning process or or really understanding my porosity as well. So I could allow moisture to really get soaked into my hair so that the curl pattern that I originally do have can start to be well-defined. Right. And over time, because of me doing this on a regular basis, especially deep conditioning, that was like my best friend. I was seeing my actual to the point I was crying I was like I have cur like I'm sitting there perplexed I have curls for C right no way that's not me it's not my hair and the more I did it the more it was just becoming beautiful I was I didn't use heat in my hair I was doing a lot of different uh, um twist hairstyles then I would take it out, condition yes. again, doing more protective styles, just really just staying in the flow. People started to notice. People started to stop me in the street because I used to just go to CVS regular shopping and I had my hair done. Mm. Me do my own hair, like a simple style like this, you know, or put mm -hmm. my hair up and do some some twists into a bun or whatever. You know, I was really being creative now with my hair because I was just loving it. It's mm -hmm. growing. This time it was like waist, um, shoulder length. 
Oh, nice. Curls. Okay. So imagine if it was stretched, imagine because our hair is very stretchy. I couldn't believe how long my hair actually got in. White people used to stop me in the street. Can we take a picture with you? Wow. Stop me. Ask me, excuse me. Is that your hair? Black people. Excuse me. Is that your natural hair? You're not wearing no, no extensions or nothing. No, it's all my hair, you know? And I'm like, people just asking, 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 just getting really curious. And I'm just like, I feel like a superstar. What's going Mm -hmm. on? Mm -hmm. Like, it was really not a a thing. Like people weren't like really seeing this, you know, because they couldn't understand. Sometimes I did a twist out. So my hair is in this wavy look. So they're just like, oh my gosh, is that? Yeah, like yeah and you know a part of it I feel embarrassed or like a you know sometimes I felt like I was a test dummy and they're like playing I don't like people doing things like that right. um but I was just like shocked that this was the response that I was getting from the public's eye including the people in my own family that they were like oh that looked nice that's really pretty. Wow. Wow. You know, everybody's just like, you know, really now understanding what I was doing. They didn't see it before until now they're actually seeing the results. And they're like, wait a minute, you, you looking really nice with your hair natural. You know what I'm saying? And that was a real testament to me because I was just like, all right, my hair is now growing. It's doing all this. People are asking me questions. The majority of the time they were asking me, do you have a YouTube channel? And I remember trying to start one and I'm like, no, that's not for me. I've done, I have an archive of videos. I'm not even lying to you because anytime I did my hair, I put the camera on and I would just do my hair, you know? And then I had to edit it. Hours of footage and then lose that hour of footage, hours of footage I've hired people to do <laughs> my editing and everything and things would not, they would not do it the way I wanted. It would look just as crappy as if I was the one doing it to the point I was like, you know what? I don't think this YouTube thing is for me. I'm just going to try another way. But before I do that, I believe in 2015-ish, again, I started to get happy. I remember I had a wedding to go to, no, a birthday party, and I blow dried my hair. And then I used the curling iron to curl my hair. Mm. And so I blow dried and curling iron. Mm -hmm. And my hair looked amazing. Like I was hyped. I was like, this is my, my hair is long and this bouncy and it's doing all that stuff. And I got hyped. So people like, oh yeah, you're so pretty, so pretty, so pretty, so pretty. For a week, I kept, I kept using the same curl wand. Curling, getting mad excited, using heat protectant, doing all that. And then I remember when I tried to wash my hair and my hair still in many areas was looking straight. No more like my waves or my curls. I'm like, oh no, did I, did I damage my hair? No, please don't tell me I damaged my hair. Like, I was like, no, I'm determined to revert it. You know, it's going to get reversed. We're going to deep condition. And that's what I did. I was doing it for four weeks. I was like, maybe I have to do it for another four weeks. Do another four weeks. When I said my hair was stringy, some areas were just looking just tired, you know, like you, it, this is done, girl. Like you gotta, you gotta let go. And I'm like shaking my head because it happened to me. I went <laughs> to a wedding that, and I got, see for you, you did it multiple times. I only did it once just for a special occasion. And I couldn't like, like how you said it was straight here. Like I had, it was weird because it wouldn't curl up no matter how many times I would wash it. So yeah, I get exactly what you're talking about. It was crazy. I was scared because I was ready to get back to my natural hair because I missed it. I was like, I I want my natural hair back. I promise I won't mess with it again. You know, you know how you say all the things, but yeah, yeah, I get it, girl. I do what, yeah, I wanted my, my, my natural hair baby back. I love my natural hair. Yeah. I found areas where it was straight, then curls, then straight or curls, straight curls. Everywhere was something different. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, it's damage for sure. You've tried everything to revert. It's been months of you trying to get it back. I t- I put my hair in protective styles majority of the time just so I don't mess with it, thinking that if I keep it, you know, twisted up, eventually it'll, it'll just help all the rest of them come back to life. It didn't. Mm-hmm. And I had to pick chop again. Wow. And this time I did it shorter and I was more confident 
in my process than I was from before. And let me tell you, when I big chop, I remember I wasn't as scared as I was in the beginning from from the first time that I did it. Um, but here's what was funny, what happened. The first time I big chop, it took about a year for me to reach the length. Okay. That I told you about the up to my shoulders. That was quick. That was to me, I thought that was quick, maybe a little, may, maybe give or two couple months, a little over a year, but it was, it, it, it I felt like it, it was a long process just yeah. for it to be waist length, in my opinion. But remember, our hair is super curly. So I really didn't know how long it was until I stretched it um, uh, because we have um, shrinkage. And so the second time I big chop, my hair grew to the same length again in six months in half the time that's why do you think that is I still ask myself that question Mm. because I feel like part of it was I was more confident and I knew exactly what I couldn't do in my hair and what I should do okay I already had a process the process didn't change I just went straight into it and I was like, all right, this is what we're going to do. I'm not putting no heat in my hair, I'm not touching no heat, you know, like just right. very methodical with it. Um, my hair was, my hair, I felt like was already adapted to what I was already doing. And this time around, plus I was, maybe I was eating a little bit better too around that time, just really trying to condense everything. But I didn't expect, my goal wasn't to get my hair longer in six months that wasn't the goal the goal was to get it back to normal like it was prior mm-hmm. how it okay. was visible. and in turn I realized in half the time my hair grew back and I was in awe I was amazing. I wish you knew specifically what it was oh my god I, c- I can't even I was and no I'm I'm even lying I was doing a lot less Really? I was doing a lot less with my hair, meaning I wasn't adding all those products that I was using prior. I mm. was doing a lot less water, conditioner, and 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 doing my shampoo and conditioner and simply water with um with with grease. Not grease. Um what kind of I forgot which one I was using around that time. Right now I'm using can can too, but prior I was using this cream for my hair. That was it. I wasn't putting more. Sometimes, oh, wait, wait, but what made you? What made you change the process? Like, what were you thinking when you decided because to? Because I remember when I just did a around the time when my hair was damaged, I was just like, um, doing the bare minimum because I didn't want my hair to be heavy, weighted down, and stuff like that. So okay. I wanted to to just see what my hair would do. And sometimes I would just spray and add um leave-in conditioner into my water that alone would just bring my hair back without me even going to the sh- get a shampoo or conditioner okay okay and I was just like I'm seeing something I don't understand it but I'm just like whatever I'm doing I'm not doing all that and it's looking a lot prettier the curls are a lot more defined like wow. before it, was, it, it felt mm-hmm. like I had um like you know when you press a sponge and all the stuff is coming out yes. that's how my hair felt like I had too much like I was adding too many things on it okay. so I was just I was just like when I was doing a lot less it looked more defined and shinier and I was just like okay let's do this trial and everything that's what I was doing I was like because I was scared to just not use plus I was a uh, I had a lot of sensitivities to products as well. I was like, nope, natural, whatever's natural. That's what I was going f- towards. You know, let me try this. Let me try that. And the lot more that I was cutting out of my process, the better my hair did. Wow. Like, like this was, now that I'm talking out loud, it almost felt like that purposely happened to me. So I can realize this. That's why I asked that question. I felt that. Yeah. Yeah. It felt purpose, like it felt like it happened to me on purpose so I can understand my hair a little bit better. Now, knowing that that allowed my hair to grow even faster, it was even more beautiful the second time around. Like, I couldn't believe this was my hair. Now I'm just like, okay, 
you got something going on here. People were like, can you tell me how you're doing it? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Can you tell me? Tell me exactly what, what product you use. And I'm like, I don't want to tell you that. Because if I tell you that and it doesn't work for you, you'd be like, this process doesn't work. I need to understand why did it work for me and why it's not working for somebody else? How can I teach somebody something that I just tell you what to do and you find the right products and get the same exact result? Because I realized I wasn't using the same products that Naturel 85 or all the other girls that I was following on YouTube, but I was getting the same results. Okay. I was still getting the curls. I was still getting, you know, I was just getting my own way of doing it. And I was just like, it's working for me. But it wasn't natural. I wasn't doing it like this. This other girl wasn't doing it like that. We all were doing it differently, but somehow we managed to get um, the look that we were attempting. Hey, sis, remember, this is only part one and the story gets even better. So stay tuned for the part two. It's going to be next Wednesday. Of course, you know when it drops. And you don't want to miss it because she's sharing tips on tips. And if you thought her journey was bomb thus far, <laughs> tune in next week for the second part of Gladia's journey. And again, trust, you don't want to miss it as she's dropping some jewels out the bat, y'all. Seriously. And don't forget, we're keeping the conversation going in our Kinky in the Kitchen podcast discussion group on Facebook. So come on over, start the conversation on this episode. And don't forget, we're bringing you kinky content in the kitchen every Wednesday on your favorite cast. And be breezy. That's all for today. What feelings are you left with? Do you have questions, thoughts? DM on IG at Natural Born Sister and let's talk about it. Oh, and don't forget to leave us a rating on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. They really help us grow and reach more women who need company on their hair journey. We'll chat it up next week.